Hi, my name's Blah 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 and Blah Blah Blah. Okay, that's how you want to do it. You want to leave these flats on top and just take the minimal amount of material required. It's faster, less cutting. And then it leaves you these open areas to get more weld, some more fill rod in there, make it stronger. If you cut too deep, you end up having to wrestle one of these out too sometimes. They get clogged in there. So when you fit it up the wrong way, looks prettier. See how nice that fits? Versus the right way. With that open gap. So the bad thing about this is this part's so thin up here, when you go to weld it, it's gonna liquefy and burn back and become part of the, the filler, if that makes sense. And then you won't wanna, instinctively, you're not gonna wanna put as much filler rod in there because you don't want it all humped up and ugly. So percentage-wise, you're getting too much 6061 in the weld joint versus your filler rod. And if there's not enough filler rod, it's really prone to cracking. I need to adjust my notch for a little bit, see how that side's cutting a little bit taller than this side. To take it even one step further and make it even better, you open it up a little bit more and smooth everything out. Here, I'll show you a comparison of these two. So you get that nice open joint the whole way around, even up on the flats a little bit to get back in there. You can't get a really pretty weld like the pros unless you do it this way. This is going to be plenty strong for almost everything, but if you really want to do it nice, this is how you do it. If your welds look good but you're still getting black little speckles in them, it's either because your weld settings are wrong, which I explain on my website exactly what weld settings I use for everything, and then how to properly clean your metal too. You want to get all this crap off the inside, because if you're doing a full penetration weld and you end up liquefying down in here at all these little ragged edges, that's going to pull out any dirt and stuff you have in there, and it's going to come out into your weld puddle and leave little black speckles. I get a lot of uneducated comments in the comment section below for people saying don't stack dimes or don't oscillate, MIG or TIG, and if you know what you're doing, you can do it. And these parts, if you make parts that look like this, I guarantee you they're going to sell better than parts that just have a straight bead with no, no, di no dime stacking, because this is visually appealing. As long as you make it thicker than the tubing, the wall thickness of the tubing, in the low spots and the high spots, the average of that, it's going to be strong. And if you're curious and you don't know, Ben test your parts and see where they crack. If it cracks right down the weld, you need to put more filler rod in. And like, so this part, I used smaller filler rod, and I actually like how that looks quite a bit, but that's probably as thin as you'd want to go on this. This is one and a half inch eighth wall tube versus this weld. This weld's a little bit, I used thicker rod, filler rod, and put more of it on, see how it's humped up a little bit more. And that's gonna be stronger, but I think it's not quite as pretty. And it depends on what you're making, you know, this might be perfectly fine, depending on what loads are applied. I hate being cringy and saying this crap, but if you want more videos like this or to see my older ones, subscribe and hit the notification bell so it lets you know when my new videos come out. I get comments all the time, people wanting me to make videos that I've already made. So check out my YouTube channel and scroll through all my videos to see. There's a lot of more popular ones that YouTube doesn't recommend anymore that I made several years ago. And if you want to know all my welder settings, I got them on my website, and then, you know, gas flow rates, tungsten selection, how I shape my tungsten, why I shape it the way I do, material selection, high quality arc shots to show you. If you like how my welds look, I show you exactly on my website how I do it, up close like you're looking right through my welding hood. And if you're sick of kicking a foot pedal around, TIG button is a variable amperage controller that I use and sell on my website, links below. And one of these welds, 
was done with a $1,300 welder that I saw on my website, and the other ones are done with my Miller 350 Dynasty. And that costs, they don't make the 350 anymore, the 400. It costs $16,000. So look at these and see if you can tell the difference.